Paul, thank you so much for joining us at our Politics, Acadia Politics webinar. So thank you. Hello to everyone that's joined us. So I'm just going to go over a quick little agenda for our webinar today. All right, so there's just a list of things you can see on your screen there. One of the first things was introduction and housekeeping. So as a reminder, um, we're going to ask you to keep your cameras off and your mics off, please, when you're not speaking, just to save bandwidth. Um, and as a reminder as well, too, this meeting is going to be recorded, this webinar, so it will be available on our website 48 hours afterwards, so you can feel free to review all the information that you learn in this webinar. I'm going to go over a brief what you need to know slide that's going to cover um, Acadia and fall and COVID-19, answer some of those questions for you. We're going to have a program overview of the politics program here at Acadia. We also have some alumni and current students that are on the line that are going to give their story of politics and their experiences in it. We're going to have some future touch points at the end and also a live Q&A uh, section at the end where you'll be able to ask any questions that you have to us on the line here. So starting off with introductions, hello everyone again. My name is Denise Wilson. I am an enrollment advisor here at Acadia. I work in the Western Canada region. So some of you on the line I may have met already. Others, if not, hello and welcome, all the same. Um, I'm going to allow everyone else from our politics department to now introduce themselves. Hi, uh, my name is Ali and I'm a recent grad of the politics program. I graduated two years ago um, and I'm excited to share my experience as an alumni. Uh, hey guys, I'm Rachel. I'm also a recent get grad from the politics department. Um, I just graduated in May. Um, and yeah, I'm also excited to uh, talk to you guys and let you know about my experience. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Whitehall and I'm the head of the politics department here at Acadia. And I'll probably be doing a lot of talking today. And so um, I think that's, uh, I'm looking at that photo, I think that's from, forever ago <laughs> and now because of COVID hair I have that hair again so uh, it's kind of representative it's nice to um, nice to have you all with us today all right thank you all so much so now I am going to address the elephant in the room by now most of you will have received an email from President Ricketts um, stating our preferred approach of a, both a blended and an on-campus learning environment and um, we don't actually have all the details yet about what exactly that's going to look like but what I would tell you is that we are actively working on that and if you'd like details I would encourage you to follow us on Instagram at Acadia U News and new to Acadia U and as well always our website so keep checking those for updates and also our summer orientation is going fully virtual so we are going to run that over the summer and so you'll also be receiving more information as we get closer to that so I would encourage you to keep checking your emails so without further ado I'm going to hand this over to our politics team so Dr. Whitehall over to you great thanks so much so um you know if you're interested in politics uh let me just sort of walk through some reasons why you might be uh, interested in pursuing a degree. Let me start with the bottom uh, point that politics is a practice. Um, and it's, you know, politics is that process that we collectively decide who we are and what our values are and how to distribute um, responsibilities and benefits among that, amongst that community. And because of that, then, um, you know, we we kind of, you know, we as a community might run into forms of conflict that we have different uh, opinions on how we should um, deal with those values and deal with the resources that we have. And then we have to collectively decide um, how it is that we're going to resolve those problems. So, you know, the second point is that the world is full of problems. I bet you've noticed a lot of problems that are we're dealing with collectively right now. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we in politics think uh, we're not daunted by problems. We see problems as um, questions that are in search of solutions and uh <clears throat> you know i think if you were to think of, if you were to sort of ponder what are the kinds of solutions to um the issues that we confront today often we default to something along the lines of well people need to know more they need better education and if they knew more than they would behave better. And that's true. I think us in politics, we agree with that. 
but we think that we have actually a bigger toolbox than that. We have a lot of, uh, of tools like policy, legislation, we have incentives, we have uh, treaties, we have strikes, we have protests, we have <clears throat> um, organizations, institutions, um, forms of solidarity and, and coalition building that we can use to collectively solve problems and create a, a kind of future for ourselves that is different than uh, the present or maintains elements of the present that we want to continue into the future. So often when people say that politics is the problem, I look at them kind of skeptically and wonder, well, what are you, you know, <laughs> where are you at? What are your kinds of investments in how things are today? And why are you resistant to change? And or what, you know, what are the kinds of things that you're trying to hold on to? And how do we support and celebrate those kinds of things? And because we're engaged in those kinds of, you know, deep uh, processes of evaluating our community and ourselves and um, our values and so on, uh, I think you find that po politics is a really empowering, dynamic and, and fun activity um, and fun area of study that really builds meaningful connections between students, students and their professors, students and their community. Um, and then it leads to really important, long lasting um, commitments and friendships and networks that will stay with you for your entire life. So politics is really, you know, we tend to think about it in our department in a, um, a, a, as a foundation for many other aspects of our life, whether they be economic, social, uh, personal, um, spiritual, all these different elements all have a political element to them. And politics, you know, in this university really uh, takes that big non-conventional approach to what counts as politics. Um, if, you, if you look at this next slide, in terms of a program overview, you see the kind of diversity that we offer in our program. You can study, we talk in these areas of specialization, you could really group these into five different kinds of themes, which would be Canadian and regional politics, global politics, comparative politics, and political theory. Now, in those five streams, you see that all these different kinds of options, whether it be international relations, international development, contemporary or ancient political theory, uh, studies of the law and of the courts, gender, uh, security, and uh, pop culture, and so on. So there's all these different ways in which those five streams are cut cut up and connect with each other, and then they make for interesting kinds of ways of, of studying um, politics. You can have, uh, you can uh, pursue a degree in the Bachelor of Arts, um, <clears throat> and you can uh, also pursue an honors degree in politics. You can double major, and you can engage in uh, co-ops and study abroad um, that all help build the elements to um, your overall degree. You'll also notice at the bottom of that slide that we contribute to a number of different multidisciplinary minors, and whether that be women and gender studies, legal studies, international development studies, and, and those two can really add uh, um, flavor and depth to um, and, and complexity really to your whatever area that you've chosen to, to focus your core core element of politics on. Uh, Ali, I think that uh, <clears throat> and Rachel, I think can you talk to a little bit about your experience um, in the Acadia politics program? Yeah, so hi again, guys. Um, I can talk a little bit to um, life in Wolfville and just um, a more specifically my experience with the politics program. Um, so, I mean, obviously, both Acadia and Wolfville are quite small. Um, and while the small university comes with obvious benefits like smaller class sizes, um, the actual tight uh, knit sense of community that Wolfville and living in a small town like Wolfville gave me um, was one of the most rewarding aspects of my decision to study at Acadia. Um, while it's a small town, it's very bustling. There's um, lots of events that bring um, people from all over to Wolfville. Um, there's wineries, so in the summertime, it's really busy with tourists. 
and you get to meet a lot of different people. Um, it's also extremely walkable, so it's really um, easy to live there without a car and still survive just fine, um, which is great for younger people who don't always have vehicles. Um, for the politics program, um, again, it's a smaller discipline as far as uh, disciplines at Acadia go, um, which allows you a lot more time with your professors. Um, and in, over the course of the degree, um, the professors will become really familiar with you and your goals, and they can help you to achieve them, which is awesome. Um, you also will have an opportunity to hear a variety of um, political views from all of your classmates because um, a lot of the um, classes aren't lecture based, they're discussion based. So you get to um, really engage with other people's ideas, which is awesome. Um, I actually wanted to do politics at Acadia because it really satisfied me to know um, that I was learning something that was relevant and felt relevant to my everyday life. Um, and it was a change from things that I had um, done in the past, which was awesome. Um, and then one of the biggest things for me was um, that each year the department does um, academic advising um, individually with each student instead of on a group basis. Um, and so for me, that was like the turning point in my degree in my second year when I had my um, individual academic advising because that's when I decided to double major um, and I never would have known that I could even do that had I not had that individual academic advising. So that was a really big um, benefit of the politics program. And then finally, um, the cl classes offered uh, give students the opportunity to participate in important and meaningful conversations, which is something that um, I really think we should strive to do in our everyday lives. And we should always challenge ourselves to be learning more. And it's good to know all, all like everyone's opinion and different ways to look at situations. Awesome. Hi, guys. Um, yeah, I'll share a little bit about my experience as well in Wolfville um, at Acadia and in the politics department. Uh, so I'd like to echo what Rachel said really about life at Acadia um, and life in Wolfville as being a great community. There's a really great on-campus community um, and really great community in Wolfville as well. I was really lucky to live in Wolfville um, for four years, stayed every summer. I think I worked at half the places in Wolfville. I felt very welcomed by the community there. Um, and coming from out of province, that was really important to me um, to really just feel like I had a home away from home um, in Wolfville. On campus at Acadia, there's an opportunity for you to find your people and find your place no matter what you're interested in. Uh, because everyone lives on campus, well, most people live on campus in their first couple of years, um, often your first year, you really get forced to make friends and to get to know the campus very quickly. Um, yeah, so you can get involved in so many different things. The Acadia Students Union is something I was involved with. Um, APSA is the Politics Association, which are all automatically a part of uh, when you become politics students. And that's a really good opportunity to get to know everyone in your department. First years get to know fourth years and you get kind of get to create the, these supportive relationships with one another, um, which is a really great thing about APSA. Um, the student newspaper, there's a huge presence from the politics department on the student newspaper. Apparently politics students like to publish their opinions. Yeah, so lots of ways that you can um, get involved on campus, which makes a big difference in your experience. Coming back to the politics program, um, I was actually interested in taking politics because I thought that I wanted to do international relations um, when I joined. And when I got to Acadia, I learned, as Dr. Whitehall just said, that the concept of politics that we take at Acadia is so much broader than just government organizations and elections. Um, so when I heard the definition, which you're gonna get on your first day, I think I'm stealing uh, Dr. Biro's thunder here, but one of the definitions of politics is who gets what, when, and why. Um, and when I heard that that's what we were gonna be talking about for the next four years, I was sold. I was like, yes, that's what I wanna figure out. Spoiler, you don't figure out who gets what, when, and why, but uh, I really enjoyed spending four years figuring that out. Um, some of my favorite aspects of study ended up being political theory, uh, which I did not think would be for me, but I really enjoyed spending time at the higher level, um, asking the big questions and using theory to try and um, try and flesh that out. And some of the classes that I really enjoyed, I thought I would share with you because I think it gives um, a good flavor for our definition of politics at Acadia 
and the different options that you have. Uh, so there's a global issues course that you take in your second year, um, which gives you a nice high level understanding of global issues. I took a class on the politics of global resistance, um, new issues in security, which was all about uh, the threats that we face today, um, applied international ethics, which was a seminar where you just debated ethics all the time, uh, politics of water. So we got to talk about the politics of everyday things like water. Um, but my favorite thing about the department was definitely the people, the relationships that you build with your professors, because as Rachel said, you're a small department is very unique. Um, and also the relationships you build with your, um, your comrades or your, the people that you're going to class with every day. Uh, it's a, because it's a small department, you're kind of moving through those four years together, um, which really gives you a sense of kind of all being in it together. Academically, you have a lot of opportunity to get involved um, in the department. Uh, in my fourth year, I was a teacher's assistant, which was a great way to give back to the program. Um, and it's a really great resource for first years as well. I also wrote my honors thesis at Acadia, which was um, a really great opportunity. And I think that that was possible for me because of the great relationship that I was able to build with my professors. I felt really supported um, through my four years and they helped me um, you know, decide to do the honors in the first place um, and then really helps me through the process, which has actually helped me a lot having that honors thesis and going through that learning experience has helped me a lot post-graduation. So um, just to give you an idea of some of the things that you can do afterwards. Uh, I spent some time with Venture for Canada, which is an entrepreneurship program after I graduated. I worked in a tech startup and I'm now doing my master's at Carleton University in Ottawa in philanthropy and nonprofit leadership. Um, and I feel like my experience in the politics department really set me up for success uh, when I left Acadia. I kind of felt like politics is applicable to everything and nothing was out of my realm of possibilities. Um, some of the key things that I just want to note that made the difference for me were the seminar style classes. Um, so in your third, third year a little bit, fourth year for sure, you do a lot of just eight to ten people in a room talking things out, learning how to articulate yourself and share your opinions, um, which I learned that a lot of other schools don't get the opportunity to do, especially not in your third year. Um, so that made a big difference. But also, uh, there's very high expectations in the department. They want you to be your best, but you get so much help in getting to be that, that great student that you um, have the capability to be. You're supported all the way through. Um, which helped me become um, a better student for sure. And politics also framed the lens through which I see the world. So I um, still think that I think of everything as political and I always come back to that who gets what, when and why, um, no matter what I'm looking at, whether it's deciding to go to a protest last week or you know trying to understand the headlines, um, I'm really seeing everything through the lens that the um, politics department gave me. Great. Thanks so much, you two. That's just, um, you should just end it there. I think it's stunning uh, endorsement of the program. I think you guys are just amazing. Um, I'll just move through it with, with these slides and maybe if you, uh, Rachel, I know you have to leave at 3.30, but if if you if there's things that you want to jump in and say before then, just, let, uh, just jump in. And same thing, Ali, if there's stuff that you want to participate in, sort of, I know in the next slide you'll see some of your friends on the uh, alumni page, so uh, you might want to just give us a, a snapshot of what where they're, where they're at and what they're doing. Um, there are some um, scholarship opportunities. Um, <clears throat> the last line says, last year politics majors held over $112,000 in scholarships and bursaries at Acadia. So, you know, there's uh, we, we want to support our students. We want our students to, su to succeed and do well. And we are, uh, you know the university and uh, the the program is is trying to do that in um, in all these different kinds of ways. And if you went to our website, you'd be able to see um, all these prizes listed and find out more information about uh, uh, who they're uh, directed towards and what areas of study they're directed towards. When we move, yeah, here's where our graduates have gone to. Um, <clears throat> And uh, you see that there's a lot of different places that students 
go after doing an, on, uh, an undergraduate degree in politics and just look at the diversity of things that people have gone on to either study or to work in. Um, you know, <clears throat> often I bet if you were telling people that you wanted to do a politics degree and people asked you that dreaded question of what are you going to do with that, um, your answer is I can do anything. <laughs> you know, there's politics is, is at play in every single aspect of life on the planet. And so having a politics degree gives you an opening to all of those different things. And I think if you look at the diversity of what you see um, in this list here, and there's more uh, listed on our website of where students have gone on onto, you see that people have gone on to an MA in international development, um, <clears throat> Carolyn worked for uh, Bernie Sanders in the United States. We have Maya, who was a stunt performer. Um, we have people, obviously, who go on to do law school. And Allison's even up there uh, with her MA in philanthropy and nonprofit leadership at Carleton, which she's doing right now. So you just see the incredible diversity of, of opportunities that a politics degree opens uh, up, you know, the world that it opens up for you. Um, do you, Allison and, and Rachel, do you have uh, friends and who've graduated from politics and gone on to um, really interesting careers and so on? Uh, yeah, I'd like to jump in there. Um, being in Ottawa, there's quite a few of us from the department that end up in Ottawa with um, the Hill obviously here. So there's a couple of people who um, work on the Hill. Um, a lot of people go on to do policy programs afterwards, so public policy, and that takes them often um, into different areas of government after that. Um, but yeah, law school is a big one. A lot of people end up there. Um, we have a colleague who ended up um, at Cambridge studying in the UK. Um, I was actually there this winter and got to meet up and chat with him. So there's, yeah, really, as Dr. Whitehall said, there's anything. You could do anything that you want, um, especially coming from the Acadia Politics Department, where we take a very broad scope of what politics means. Yeah, and every single year we have an, uh, what's called an alumni forum and we invite alumni back to Acadia to share, um, <clears throat> you know, their experiences in the work world and also to emphasize um, the kinds of skills that the, you know, that students, current students should pay attention to, usually reading and writing and those kinds of things and sort of so students get to recognize that they're actually engaged in really meaningful forms of training, skill acquisition, and then also to build what I think is something very special about our politics program is the network that uh, that exists that Acadia politics students are always helping out other Acadia politics students and Acadia students in general um, with uh, achieving success in their life and finding finding. Uh, you know, exciting pathways after their degree. And so all of those kinds of things are built into how we understand our program. And, and we have a, a forward uh, looking um, orientation towards our, our program. So I'll just walk you through <clears throat> what it would be like for you if you uh, uh, were just entering into your, as you're registering for your first year. Um, <clears throat> you'll see that in the fall and the winter, there's there there's two different columns, the politics 1303 and politics 1403. I'll ex and the politics passport. I'll explain in the next slide, um, but those are obviously the required politics courses that you would have to take, and I, I'll talk about them um, in their own slide next. The English courses, the languages, and the sciences and humanities. That's all part of what's called. Um, the arts core. So we really want you to graduate from Acadia with uh, um, ex being exposed to a lot of different kinds of things. So we wouldn't want you just to uh, graduate from Acadia and only having had politics courses in the same way that we wouldn't want someone coming out of a business degree and never having um, been exposed to perhaps the social and political implications of how a business is run or the decisions that they make. So we really are always looking for that holistic uh, approach to thinking about uh, education and about our role as citizens in Canada and in this community and in the world. And so that that first year really starts to give you a taste of all of those different kinds of avenues and so that you can build those into your four-year program. <clears throat> 
Um, the first year, so here's the use Politics 1303. Um, that first one is really dedicated to uh, a little bit of political theory, meaning that you learn about some core concepts like democracy and politics and law and justice and so on. And those are all explored within the context of uh, Canadian <clears throat> and regional politics. And so that first term, you get to have that kind of uh, getting to know your own country, getting to know your own, your own region and the kinds of issues that we as a country uh, face, and then uh, you know explore um, that in relationship to some core concepts, some really key concepts that then animate those uh, those uh, tensions and those dilemmas in our and how we search for solutions in relationship to those dilemmas and those those issues that we face. Um, the global politics is a similarly structured course in terms of you have these core concepts and, and then we shift <clears throat> the scale up to the to the global level and then we think about questions of war and peace, international law and justice, social movements and so on, uh, security, and then we explore them through some of the foundational concepts that make um, our world the way it is today. One of the things that we believe strongly in at, in this politics program is that you have to connect what's happening inside classes to what's happening outside classes. So we have this really it's gaining a lot of fame, this politics passport program, and you actually get a little passport and you go to different events on campus and we only uh, ask you one question. Well, what's political about that? So you say you might go to a hockey game or go to a women's volleyball game, or you might go out to the bar, or you might go um, <clears throat> out for um, out to hear a talk, someone speak, and you come back and we're going to give you a passport stamp if you can answer that question of what well, what was pol political about that event. And what's really interesting is the way that students start to make those connections between stuff that they've been thinking about in class and the fact that, um, you know, uh, uh, a sporting event is divided into teams and they're trying to win and all of the, you know, the fans are cheering for one side as opposed to another side and what that means and what are the consequences and who gets what, when and why and so on. And so all of those kinds of things are really solidified in this politics passport program and uh, you do it year after year. Um, first year, you there are seven different categories, uh, national politics, international politics, indigenous politics, these kinds of things. And then the second year, you you are being exposed to more and more different uh, events that are on campus and in the community so that you can make that connection between what's happening inside a class to what's happening outside of class. If I can just jump in there, Dr. Whitehall. Yes, please do. I really liked the politics passport. I was in the first first year that it like came into ex into existence and people were a little bit like, what do you mean? I don't understand. But it ended up being super fun and a really good way um, to kind of push you to think outside the box and also to do really fun things in the community. Like it was um, a lot of fun and really got me more involved on campus um, and in Wolfville for sure. Yeah, Rachel, did you have a similar experience? Nope, she just left the room like literally that minute. Oh, well, she did. I know she did because I was her academic advisor and she talked about how great uh, the passport program was. Okay, yeah, next slide then. So <clears throat> we're gonna head into some summations and I th of why, po why politics at Acadia and why the Acadia experience. And I think probably what you've heard so far is that in the politics program at Acadia, we have a really unique and broad understanding of what counts as politics. You know, we think that what happens in terms of government, elections and so on is important, but we see politics happening in all these other kinds of spaces in our lives. And we think that if we pay attention to those political aspects, we then identify um, important opportunities to change those meaningful, those relationships and make them um, meaningful and make them uh, what we want them to be outside of, of government and so on. I think we really have one of the most creative and dynamic politics departments in the Atlantic uh, region and in some ways in, in, the, in the country. You know, we have uh, really exciting um, 
course design. We have really exciting courses. Uh, we have, we're, because we are a small program, we're always innovating and trying to find new ways to make the information relevant to you and uh, your your lives and what's happening in the world around you. And we're designing and creating new and different forms of assignments and uh, exercises so that you can re uh, really understand those those connections. And um, uh, we, we, you know, we have uh, politics uh, film series, we have a UN club, we have all of those kinds of things that allow for those kinds of connections, including, of course, the politics passport. I think our students really uh, punch above their weight on campus. You know, um, Ali mentioned the, uh, the newspaper uh, and student government and APSA and, you know, politics students in many years have really <laughs> run Acadia and, you know, they've created amazing and uh, organizations that have lasted on campus, whether it be Water Watch or they've started up Amnesty International uh, on campus or they've ran political clubs from uh, the young conservatives to young liberals to the young NDP, you know, all of those kinds of organizations um, can be created on campus and can be sustained on campus and you'll usually you'll find a politics student behind one of those on campus uh, clubs and organizations. Um, I think you probably have seen that how much uh, we value hands on and experiential connections through our um, program. We haven't really talked uh, much about the co-op and study abroad program. Um, those are things that are run by the university as a whole and we uh, in the department support those, uh, those activities. And if you went to our website, you'd be able to see um, more of those kinds of opportunities, but they are there and they tend to happen within your third year. Um, the Acadia Politics Department, I think, has the um, strongest and most developed political theory program in the Atlantic provinces. It really is one of our core strengths. It doesn't surprise me that Ali um, initially wasn't interested in political theory, but then as we push towards those questioning those foundational assumptions that make our world possible, and as it is, we start to get really excited about what uh, uh, thinking about those those foundations and how they could be different and what what it would mean to redefine some of those pillars that we've always taken for granted. Can I jump in here again? Sorry. I feel like I no, go for it. Um, I just wanted to mention that I didn't recognize the uh, uniqueness of the politics department until I came to Carleton and met lots of people from other politics programs across the country or similar programs. Um, and I really found that they did not have the same experience that I did. They didn't have the same exposure that I did, um, especially to, you know, different ways of thinking about politics. Um, and also coming from a small school, you kind of get this small school syndrome thinking, oh my God, I'm going to this massive, you know, school where a bunch of people come from U of T and like there's just all this this big school uh, mentality but I found that coming from a small school gave me a huge advantage and coming from a small department did as well um I could read and digest information so much faster than other people only because Dr. Whitehall forced me to, get to learn how to read really well and learn how to be very critical and um and digest my thoughts um in a way that I wouldn't have learned how to do um, if someone wasn't asking me to do it. So yeah, very unique experience in the politics department that has paid off um, for sure. Thanks, Ali. <clears throat> um, I think in, in a similar spirit is that uh, the politics department has led the university and because it's such a, you know, it's committed to questions of justice, it's, uh, it's committed to questions of uh, reconciliation, it's committed to questions of, of um, just questions of community of what it mean, what does it mean to live together? We've really led the university in terms of acknowledging and celebrating indigenous knowledge and pedagogy and trying to build that uh, those kinds of questions that are uh, so important in Canada um, into every single course that we teach in our department. Um, and I think and again, the part of the reason why we're, we our creative and dynamic department is because all of the faculty members have come from all of these different places. We have um, <clears throat> faculty members who've come from Eastern Europe, 
from Turkey. We have uh, members. I did my PhD at the University of Hawaii. Um, others have come through uh, the United States and through Toronto. So we really have these diverse paths um, um, of our faculty, you know, from Alberta all the way to Ottawa. And, uh, you know, we brought them together into one dynamic uh, community. And, uh, you know, and so that, that's reflected in, in everything we do. And uh, I think to re reaffirm what Ali has said, I think our department has a national reputation for preparing students to be ready to enter graduate schools. And when you have an Acadia politics uh, degree on your transcript and your application, um, universities are eager to have a student who's so well prepared coming into their graduate program. So in terms of a kind of a, a summation, you know, I think what makes politics at Acadia unique is that we, you know, as all Acadia has uh, small classes, you know, if an uh, introductory class um, at its largest would probably be about 60, 65 students. Um, that's a, you know, in, in the first year. And even those are broken down into smaller classes or smaller uh, groups and so on. Um, a, a second year course, usually about 20 to 30 students third year class might be uh you know 15 uh students and as ali said about the seminars they can sometimes be four or five students they can be uh 10 students and so they are really small spaces where uh, the questions are being supported by faculty but are being driven in most cases by student interests and concerns uh, the Passport program demonstrates our commitment to experiential learning and that important connection between what's happening inside class to what's happening outside. Um, you know, we have these great opportunities like the Model UN. They've gone to New York and Montreal um, and won awards. Um, <clears throat> we have the Politics Film Series, which for 11 years now has met every single Friday night um although sometimes it was thursday and uh you know to talk to watch a film and then collectively pull it apart and see what's going on you know what are the questions how does it relate to our to the issues that are unfolding around us and and so on sometimes it's nice to watch a film as opposed to read a book to be able to to make those kinds of connections the student association is always putting on really interesting events and creates that sense of community for our students <clears throat> and, uh, you know, we really have that rich environment where student, where uh, speakers and lecturers are coming in and giving talks. And so you don't get just exposed to, you know, we may be a, a smaller place, but you get exposed to the world because they, you know, we invite um, people to come and give talks and so on. Uh, alumni forum, I mentioned, where our past graduates come back and share their lessons and their uh, their connections. And we uh, really value the, that connection with our alumni. Um, Ali and uh, Rachel both did their honors uh, thesis. And uh, we, at the end of the year, we share, we celebrate those um, thesis projects. There's usually about eight to 10 students that decide to do uh, honors um, thesis, and we probably have about 85 majors. So, um, you know, in a graduating class, that's a really incredible success rate that um, if you, you have, you know, 15, 20 students per year, um, and then half of them decide to do an honors thesis, uh, it's really exciting to see uh, students committing themselves to those kinds of uh, bigger projects. Um, and like Ali also mentioned, and Rachel as well, is that there's teaching assistantships and research assistantships um, available to both of them. Rachel did one with me this year, and she was helping me on a, on a research project about animal rights. And so she did a bunch of research. I think she also did a research assistantship with uh, Dr. Aaron Crandall, who focuses on Canadian and Canadian politics and uh, gender in the courts. And um, Rachel helped uh, do research about the legal studies um, uh, program. 
Uh, we do also offer graduate programs in political science. And <clears throat> so, you know, you'll see a couple of students who are um, have uh, stayed at Acadia or come to Acadia because of the expertise of one of our faculty members. And similarly, we are a major contributor to the uh, social and political thought program, um, which is the only kind of pro the only program of its kind. Um, I think we're saying now west or east of Kingston, and so it's really exciting for us to be um, to to be a draw for students that wanted to explore the, the those theoretical assumptions and connections that underpin um, the core aspects of our lived lives. So I think we'll go on to some opportunities for you to uh, get uh, uh, to ask questions or to if you have any questions for me or for um, Rachel or Allie or uh, the recruitment team. I think that they'll explain this slide for you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Whitehall. Well, so thanks overall for to Dr. Whitehall, to Rachel and to Allison. Um, as a reminder for everyone, a copy of this presentation will be made available within 48 hours on our website. And as well, if anyone has any questions regarding enrollment or admissions, feel free to contact myself or any other member of our enrollment team at Acadia for you at acadiau.ca. Any specific questions for the politics department, you can email politics at acadiau.ca and they will get back to you. So now we're going to get to the Q&A section. So um, there is a raise hand feature in Microsoft Teams, though depending on your settings, you may or may not have that. So if you'd like to ask a question through your microphone, you can type in raised a hand in the uh, chat feature. If you'd rather just type your question instead of actually speaking it, you can type your question now in the chat box. So I'll give you guys some time to come up with your questions. Again, as a reminder, acadia for you at acadiau.ca or politics at acadiau.ca is here for you as well for any questions that you may be shy to ask now in this forum. So we are going to moderate first come first served and don't worry, don't be shy because we are here to help. So. Yeah, and I'll just, just again say thank, thank you so much so for uh, joining us today and uh, really also point you towards the website where um, the politics website where if you have questions for individual faculty members, um, all of their email uh, addresses are listed under their faculty profiles. And you can always say you're interested in comparative politics and you want to talk to Rachel Brickner, Dr. Rick, Rachel Brickner, feel free to email her. And same thing with Dr. Aaron Crandall, same thing with Dr. Cynthia Alexander. All of them are uh, everyone is open to taking your questions and to talking about the program. So um, just because I was speaking today doesn't mean that the rest of the faculty isn't interested and excited to meet you and to uh, to answer your questions. Yes. Um, hi, Dr. Whitehall. I just have a question for you um, just in general for our first year students coming in. Um, they might not be aware of how much reading is involved within the politics program um, or how many events that they can attend um, during a week and etc. Um, so just for me, I know that I didn't expect as much um, intensive work coming in as a first year, a lot of reading. Um, so I don't know if you, you want to touch touch base on that a little bit for future students. Yeah, I think that's what's so exciting about a university degree compared to a high school degree is that there is really a reset. You know, you've developed all of these patterns and these tricks that have gotten you through um, high school and you've done really well in high school and learned a bunch of stuff there. And then this university is a different kind of experience. And so there can be a bit of a shock going from high school to university in terms of uh, workload and time management. And, um, you know, I think the first year classes are designed to try to balance those uh, new ex experiences and new expectations with uh, um, supporting students so that they can succeed in those courses. Um, sometimes the balance might be off, but, you know, I guarantee you, if you ever go to one of your faculty members and your, 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 um, your professor in your class and say, hey, I'm having a little bit of problem. I'm keeping up. Can you 
give me some advice on how to better uh, manage my time or to pr better prepare for class. Uh, there are always, we have an open door policy in our department. Um, you, you, we have office hours that are dedicated, but whenever our doors are uh, open, it means that we're there and it means that we're, um, we're willing to, to have a, a chat with you. I do think that politics tends to be uh, more reading intensive than some other programs and uh, and maybe even writing intensive. And I think that the reason why we do that is that we want you to learn those concrete skills early and uh, um, and learn how to, you know, I, you know, if you were to imagine what your most future jobs will be, it will probably be reading something that someone who's in a higher position than you doesn't want to read, but wants to know what it says. And so your initial job is often going to be reading stuff for other people and telling them what it says. And all of our alumni panels have come back and said, the most important thing that I ever learned from um, my Acadia undergraduate degree was how to take a piece of writing and digest it down into something small and manageable. And we usually do that through something called uh, a journal. And we get them to uh, write a one page, uh, you know, we give them the skills to be able to do that. And we and students can then take a article and then boil it down to something that's usable to other people. Ali, do you remember uh, journals? Oh, yeah. I don't think I'll ever forget journals. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, Anna, I hear you. I did not, I mean, we were in the same class, um, <laughs> didn't expect the amount of reading and writing, but um, by your third, fourth year, you don't even blink twice. Like it, it just becomes the way that you learn, like you, in the way that you um, go about your week is structured around um, those reading and writing requirements. Um, and it just becomes, it becomes second nature at some point. And yeah, your profs are totally available to help you develop new habits and um, learn how to be prepared and develop the tools to, to meet those requirements. But the other thing that's available is your TAs. So your TAs, um, every kind of small group of uh, students is, is given a TA in their first year classes. Um, and they're a resource that you meet with once a week. Um, and I was the TA, I met with people um, all the time to figure out what they needed and how to give them that support in the same way that I went to my TAs in my first year. Um, but the best thing I found for helping me learn those skills in first year was um, my other politics students. There was nothing like a little bit of struggle or a late night in the library to really bring you closer together and um, really go through it together. So that camaraderie um, definitely helped me in my first year as well. Anna, was that your experience as well? Yeah, of course. So. I might be in a different situation than most students coming in, as in um, to my English skills. I was coming in from a French high school, um, doing only schooling in French. And so transitioning from that into a completely English um, uh, environment and reading a lot of these complicated uh, political theories um, and just like really using different specific words to translate specific um, um, theories or terms that I'm trying to, to say and convey my message. Like you, you can probably hear it in, in how I'm speaking right now. It's not at a level of a, of a complete immersed English speaker. Um, so that was definitely something that I struggled with. But just like Allison, um, I did find it very, very helpful to kind of um, seek support within my peers and consequently made a lot of good friendships that way as well. Yeah, your crew was was memorable. You guys absolutely, all, absolutely. Uh, you guys were always together and always supporting each other. It was amazing to see. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm not a politics student, everyone, so I can't get in on this camaraderie, but in yeah, the future, this will be you guys, you future students. We could just all so, hang out hang forever. Essentially, <laughs> essentially, look at that. 
So it doesn't seem as though we have any questions that I can see popping up in the chat box, but I mean, that's okay. I think we've dropped a lot of information um, on you all. So again, thank you all so much for attending our webinar. And as a reminder, this will be on our website and you can always contact us again, acadia for you at acadiau.ca or politics at acadiau.ca for any help. So thank you all so much for your time and uh, see you soon. See you. See you. Thanks, everyone. Bye everyone.